Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast has evolved over the five plus years since it first launched. From now on, I'm going to be talking about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. And also mindset, of course, but mindset of all kinds, not just business mindset. I think. Things are changing for me, as you may have noticed if you've been following me online or listening to this podcast, so anything goes here. I hope you stay along for the ride. Thank you so much for joining us today, and now let's get into this week's episode. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast, episode 282. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another solo episode. Today, I'm going to talk about seeing the signs on our kind of path in life. Today's episode is inspired by my extensive year-end review that I've been doing. I don't think I've ever spent so much time kind of going through old journals and reviewing my year as I have this year, which is really interesting. So it first started around Samhain when I began reviewing the year and looking at all the things that I needed to let go of to move into the new year. I talked a little bit about this and how you can do something similar in 275, so I won't go into that now. Went through all my old journals, and I pulled my 12 oracle cards for the new year, each one for each month of the year. Then I found some journal prompts online for reviewing the year and looking at not just the past year, but looking at what you want for the new year that I really enjoyed working through. And then I kind of dug even deeper As I reviewed the past year as it's relating to my work with my Druid course, which is the Bardic grade course from Obad. So I have been going through kind of how my relation to nature has changed and my spiritual relationship to nature and all that kinds of stuff. So it's been really interesting for me because as I've been going through these old journals, reviewing what I wrote, I made some really surprising discoveries. And I realized that a lot of what I'm now focusing on and the changes that I made in my life and business actually came up in my old journals as far back as a year ago. But I didn't remember writing them down. So that was kind of shocking to me. And it made me realize that it's taken me the entire year to actually put into practice the ideas that I had about my new focus, which also really surprised me. So this has made me want to reflect on how I can pay better attention to the signs of my path and the changes that I want to make so that I can become more aware of the shifts and changing of focus that I need and want to make in my life. Now, this is very much a work in progress for me. This is something that I've been thinking about a lot the last few days, but it's still very fresh. However, the spirit of reviewing the year and moving into the new year, and so I wanted to share this with you now because I think it might be interesting and useful for you too. So today I'm going to talk about how you can recognize signs from the world, the universe, spirit, your higher self, whatever you want to call it, whatever your perspective is, as to changes you might want to make in your life. Changes regarding things you might want to focus on, changes regarding your life's direction, the path that you're taking, that kind of thing. To talk about all the little signs and details and things that you might want to pay attention to and how you can not only see these signs but take action on them so that you can perhaps make these changes sooner rather than later. I was really shocked that I was thinking about this stuff as far back as a year ago. And I don't know whether it just needed time to marinate in my system or I needed more details. But I feel like this year could have perhaps been easier if I had spent more time focusing on this stuff rather than just kind of seeing the seeds but not necessarily planting them so that they could grow, which is fine. Like, I know everything unfolds as it should. I know that I'm on the right path. And interestingly, I got this email this week from my Akashic Records Keepers I will post a link to that in the show notes if you haven't heard me mention this before. It's these weekly emails that you can get from Vicki Young in the States, and she does this fantastic, super focused Akashic Records reading of kind of what you need to be focusing on this week. So this week's was hilarious because I tend to get very 
impatient and I want stuff to happen and I want things to change and it's like I want instant results. I'm probably not the only person who experiences this, so if you perhaps fall into the same category, you might resonate with this. So the email comes in over the weekend and it says, Holly, we wish to send this message to you so that you can realize that you are exactly where you need to be. NEED in all caps. NEED to be. Think about that for a minute, Holly. You need to be somewhere right now. And where in fact is that? <laughs> so, <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't think I've ever laughed so much from an Akashic Records reading because <laughs> I feel like that was their kind of humorous way of driving home the fact that I am exactly where I need to be right now. You know, I did some belief statements on that just to really help that embed into my brain because I get so like, why am I not further down my path? Why am I not doing more? Why am I not? Ugh. And that's not very good. So this is a reminder that, of course, we all are exactly where we need to be on our paths right now. However, sometimes it's nice to pay attention to these signs so that you know what's coming, so that you can work on them. I know I'm contradicting myself here because I'm doing this podcast to help you see the signs so that you can maybe speed things up, even though I know we're all right where we're supposed to be on our paths. So my intention for this episode is to help you see the signs. You can do with them whatever you want. You can set them aside, meditate on them, learn more about the stuff that's kind of zinging for you. Yeah, do whatever you want with the signs, but I find it really useful to know that they're there. So anyway, into the episode. So last November, it was the 26th of November last year, I have this page in my journal that says, notice the signs. And I'm going to use this as one of the kind of first examples of signs that I was seeing in my life that wasn't, I wasn't taking action on. So this was about when I had the idea or the sense that I needed to shift my spiritual path away from the group that I'd been in for 12 years and focus on something new, something perhaps nature-based but I wasn't sure what that was or what that looked like. And I'd spent probably at least a year, if not more, feeling really frustrated as I looked at different ways forward in terms of my spiritual path. So when it finally came through and I realized it was Druidry and it was this Obad course in particular, I wrote down, notice the signs. And these were signs that as I looked back in my life, I could have seen if I had paid more attention to them. So I kept really being drawn to the word druid. Every time I saw it online, it kind of had a zing for me. So the year prior in 2016, when I came back from my walk on the Ridgeway, I started looking into information about West Kennet Long Barrow because that was one of the first places that I visited near the Ridgeway before I actually got started on the actual national trail. I felt such an immediate connection to that place, so I wanted to learn more about it. And the website that I found was this blog post from this hedge druid. I'll link to that in the show notes, talking about West Kennet Long Barrow and some dowsing that he had done there. And, and I found that really interesting, but it was the word druid that really kind of had a zing to me. And then I started reading Juliette Marier's Daughter of the Forest, six book series. And then I became obsessed with her and started reading like all of her books. And eventually read her bio on the back of one of her books that said that she was also a member of Obad. And that was the thing that actually got me to go back to the Obad website, which I visited, God knows when. And that was when I saw the Bardic Grade course. And I realized that now as I'm going over this list, it's really even noticeable how many signs from way back then were kind of paving the way to next year and the things that I plan for next year. So a lot of the characters in these books were either healers or priestesses. And actually saying priestess, I was even really, really drawn and 
think this was early last year, perhaps the year before, to the Mists of Avalon books. And I read that entire series, which I think was like seven books. And I was really drawn to that whole kind of priestess ancient culture thing. But even more so with Juliette Marier's books was all of the healers and the herbs and the plants. And then this year I read all of the Little House on the Prairie books again. And I was really, really into that concept of rural living and how they were working with the land and how they were so in tune with the land. So again, this, this kind of list of signs has to go, comes from my journal a year ago. But I can see the signs as I go through this year in terms of the types of fiction books that I was really, really drawn to. So my plans for next year include taking a plant spirit initiation course, which is a nine-month course, which I will link to in the show notes, that helps you work with the spirit of the plants for healing and transformation. And I'm so, so excited about this course. So based on this kind of list and these things, my suggestions for you would be to notice the signs in terms of words that have kind of a zing for you. And if you don't know what that is, ask me, but I think you'll know in your gut. It's like certain words or concepts or things just kind of like stand out in your mind, like the word druid. I didn't really know what druid was. I'm sure I knew it was some kind of pagan spirituality path, but didn't know more than that. But yet the word itself, every time I saw it, it was like zing. So pay attention to the things that have zing for you. Next, pay attention to the books that you're drawn to. And obviously, if you're looking at the fiction books or the nonfiction books that you're drawn to, that's going to be more obvious. You know, if I had been reading books on like herbalism or plant healing or stuff like that, that would have been an obvious, clear sign to the path that I seem to be heading on. But with fiction, notice if you start reading, if you're kind of really obsessed with a certain author, a certain genre, a certain series of books. So for me, it started with the Mists of Avalon books and that whole kind of ancient priestess world. Next, it moved on to the Juliette Marier books, which were very much about the herbal healers and plant healing and, again, ancient British and Irish spirituality and the Druids. There are lots of Druids in her books. Then this year, it was the Little House on the Prairie books, which also had that deep connection to the land and that deep connection to nature and plants and animals. And I've recently started rereading these books that I read decades ago, which is the Clan of the Cave Bear series. So I'm on book four of that. And I was just talking in my Patreon group the other day about how I've been so embarrassed to share some of the books that I've been reading on Goodreads because, I don't know, I get really judgmental about the books that I read. But these Clan of the Cave Bear books I'm loving because the main character, Ayla, she heals with plants. She's a healer. She's an herbalist. And I'm loving that. The author actually talks about specific plants, European kind of plants that are used for healing. And I love it. I love hearing all the tea she makes and how she heals people. And I just love that kind of world of ancient healing. So pay attention to stuff like that. Again, that's words that zing, concepts that zing, and the books that you're reading. I actually even wrote down I have a page in, a few pages in my journal from that period, from December of last year. I've got one list of things that zing. So maybe sit down and make a list. Things that zing. Some of the things that I wrote on that list were writing books, doing my podcast in a new format, which is what I've been doing this year without the interviews, Avebury, walking in nature, reading good books. Those were all the, some of the things that zing for me at that time. Zing, zung, zang. Don't know what the past tense is. They had zing for me. Then on the next page, I actually wrote down a list of things that felt heavy. This is something also that I recommend you doing because, interestingly, some of the things that felt heavy one, online business. I have been feeling such an aversion to the online business world for so long. And that was clearly a sign that. I needed to let go of the business mindset stuff and move towards the nature stuff and my writing and non-businessy stuff. And that was so hard for me to do. It was so hard for me to let go of that identity. And I feel like I'm still 
not fully disconnected from it, but the signs were there. You probably heard me complaining about online marketing. Second thing on my list that felt heavy, marketing online. I was so disillusioned with online marketing for so long. That was such a clear sign that I needed to move away from that world. And yet I wasn't able to do that until I saw more clarity on what I did want instead. Another thing on the list, discovery calls. I started feeling a little bit disillusioned with discovery calls. I often find that people can be really flaky sometimes. Sometimes people weren't showing up for them and it was just really frustrating and annoying me. I would often have discovery calls that were lovely with fantastic people and I was so happy to meet them, but I would get really annoyed with the people that wouldn't show up. And, you know, I think that's another sign of my path forward. So right now I'm not really taking on new clients. I'm not actively seeking new clients. I'm pretty much just working with people that already know me, either previous clients, existing clients, people in my Patreon group. I've been putting out offers to them. Yeah, so not looking at taking on new people unless they come recommended from an existing client. So I have another list of things. Time in the new year will be spent. One, walking. Two, in nature. Three, doing the OBOD course. Four, taking others on walks. Five, doing navigation and outdoors courses. Six, reading good books. And I did all those things. So As a result of doing this journaling, I saw what I needed to be spending time on. I made that list and I did it. So this is also kind of an example of what you can do to start taking steps down those paths based on the signs that you're seeing. So I hope that makes sense. Another sign is animals. So pay attention if there are any animals that stand out for you when you're out in nature. And this isn't just, oh, I saw a bird, that bird means this. It's something that like really, really stands out for you. So for example, when I was in Avebury about a year and a half ago with my friend Kara, we were walking to the pub for dinner at night and there were all these black slugs everywhere. Like there were so many slugs. I I can't remember the last time I saw so many slugs. It was like I was sidestepping to get away from the slugs. So as we're walking, I finally said, God, what is it with all these slugs? There's slugs everywhere. And she said, slugs? What slugs? Like she hadn't noticed them. And to me, they were everywhere. And I was just like, that is so weird. They're everywhere. How can you not see these slugs? And she said, when we get back to the B&B, let's see what slugs mean in terms of like animal symbolism. And we did, and it was totally relevant. So it's an animal that really stands out for you. So Again, and I have this in my journal from December of last year, I was visiting my parents, sleeping with my windows open at night because it was really hot. And I'm lying there in bed trying to sleep and I hear this owl. But this owl was like in stereo. He sounded like he was in my room and this owl was just hooting and hooting and hooting and just wouldn't shut up. So finally I got up, turned on my light, turned on my phone, looked up the meaning for owl and he shut up (laughs) and he moved on. But I ended up looking out the window and this owl was sitting on the edge of the neighbor's house, which was like right outside my window on the edge of his roof. And I just thought, God, what are the odds that this owl is going to be right outside my window? Well, the message was really relevant. So again, that's something, an animal that stands out. So when you have these experiences with nature, whether it's a plant or an animal or a mineral or whatever, and it really zings for you, I'm going to use that word again, pay attention to it. Pay attention to it. In the same way, like songs that get stuck in your head, or songs that keep coming up for you, or songs that you keep hearing. So as I've been working on my tree book this year, so often I get that line or two from that song, it's a Simon and Garfunkel song, Feeling Groovy, that goes, slow down, you move too fast. Got to make the morning last. So I actually just had to edit out because I tried to sing that little bit for you. It was not good. You did not want to hear that. So slow down, you move too fast. That was what kept getting stuck in my head every time I would either be walking to the trees to collect their stories or sometimes even being out in nature, but it was specifically when I was going to collect the stories from the trees. And that was a sign that I needed to be slowing down in nature and I needed to be being still in nature. I needed to sit still in nature. I needed to spend more time in quiet stillness outdoors 
and not just be walking all the time and moving all the time. So pay attention to songs that come up into your head or that you hear all the time. And then going back to what I said about my aversion to online marketing, if you have a really strong aversion to something, or if you're always complaining about something, or if you're just really annoyed with something, pay attention to that because that's perhaps something that you might want to be moving away from or letting go from. Okay, so this thing really annoys me. This online marketing really annoys me. What do I want instead? What would I rather have instead? What would I rather be experiencing instead? So look at that annoying thing and flip that on its head and turn it around. So this is all about paying attention to the little details, including patterns. So this could be recurring thoughts, recurring experiences. Pay attention to all the little things that keep coming up over and over again for you. So again, whether it's songs or things that you have an aversion to or things that you really like or books that you're reading, pay attention to the recurring patterns and things. And another thing that's really important for me to point out here is that you need to be willing to see the truth even when it's not what you want to see. So I was clearly seeing the signs, but not not letting them sink in. So, you know, I was getting all these signs that I needed to be moving my focus away from business and toward nature stuff, but it was so hard for me to let go of that identity of business mindset person that I was seeing the signs, but it really wasn't sinking in because it wasn't the sign that I wanted to see or the message that I wanted to hear. So the more you can be open and flexible and open to change and open to pivoting in your business or in your life, or just kind of shifting your perspective and looking down a different path, the easier it will be for you to not only see these signs, become aware of them, but also integrate them and interpret them and take action on them in your life. Now, I think this is all a lot easier if you have some kind of quiet time or morning ritual or evening ritual or some meditation time, or some time where you can connect with yourself. Because the better of a connection that you have with yourself, the easier it is to see these signs and interpret them for what they are meant to say to you. And it really helps to have some kind of journaling practice where you write this stuff down so that you can go back and read this stuff, see what you've written down. So I've been doing a really in-depth year-end review, but I'm starting to think maybe I should be doing either a monthly review or a quarterly review or doing this more frequently because I think if I would to go through my journals more frequently, it would make it a lot easier for me to take action on this stuff and really clearly see the path ahead before it becomes painfully obvious. So if this is something that sounds right for you that you might want to do, either do a monthly review or a quarterly review or every time you finish a new journal or an old journal review, because I go through about, I would say about four journals a year. So that's kind of a quarterly thing. So I could very well sit down every time I finish a journal before I crack open a new one and spend some time going through the old stuff and looking at things that I wrote down, things that have changed since then. One thing I do a lot of in my journals is I write down, whenever I do belief statements or energy work, I write all that stuff in my journal so I can see what I worked on, when I worked on it, and what has changed since then. So if you do this kind of work with yourself, it's really, really, really useful to write it in your journal because that way you can have a good idea of what has changed since you did that work. And I think that's really, really important for me. Another sign, and perhaps the most important sign, is your gut feeling. That's your intuition. It's always there. You've always got it. And the more you cultivate your intuition, the easier it will be for you to see these signs and take action on these signs. I'm going to reference my book, Business Intuition, It's useful not just for business intuition, but all kinds of intuition. And in that book, I give you some really clear steps on how to better your intuition, how to kind of turn up the volume on it so that you can more clearly see these signs and hear the messages from your intuition and how to take action on your intuition. So I'm going to wrap this up. So to quickly recap, 
This is all about paying attention to the little signs, the little details, the patterns, the recurring thoughts, experiences, songs, aversion to something, or being drawn to something, animals that might be showing up in your life in a weird way, songs in your head, gut feeling, things that zing. Like I said, I'm sure you'll know what that means. And finally, I want to just remind you to be open to change, open to shifting, open to possibility of receiving signs and messages that you might not want to hear because the sooner you receive them, the easier it will be for you to make those shifts. So just be open to receiving this stuff, even if it's not maybe what you necessarily want to see. So I hope you found this episode interesting and useful. I'm actually going to be popping some journaling prompts into the Patreon group. So if you are not yet in my Patreon group, I would love to see you in there. If you head over to patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton, you can join me there. Membership starts at just $1 a month and you'll get exclusive access to content I don't share anywhere else, including journal prompts, which I'm super excited to be sharing because I find it really useful when I'm journaling to respond to journaling prompts and answering questions and things that other people have put together. Sometimes I'll just do some free writing, but it's really, really useful for me, at least, to follow prompts that other people have given, whether it's in a blog post or as part of my bardic training or whatever. I find them really, really useful. So I'm super excited to be preparing this for the Patreon group. So again, love to see you in there. Please also drop me a line. Let me know what you thought of this week's episode. Or if you have any questions, you can email me at holly at hollywharton.com. Thank you so much for listening. Next week, I will be back with the fabulous Joanna Hennon, and we will have another episode for you. So thank you again for listening. I know I just said that, but I'm saying it again, because if you weren't listening, I wouldn't be doing this podcast. I really, really love hearing from listeners, so feel free to drop me a line. And remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 282 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.